So let's call this podcast an attack plan for Warhammer 40K. I'm following up on a couple of comments. For those of you getting involved in Warhammer 40,000, soaking up the knowledge, the narrative, admittedly, it is very, very overwhelming. Now, YouTube is a great resource because the first piece, kind of the sub piece before this, is picking your 40K army. What exactly you want to play. So coming into this podcast here, we're going to assume you've picked your army for whatever reason. And now you're venturing out onto YouTube and various blogs to look up tactics and figure out how to start generating that alpha on the gaming table. Certainly, look, winning is important in any war game. We're going to try and do our best to win. We're going to try and do our best to create a narrative and be a a good-natured opponent. I like to think of it as reliving or building a little part of the grimdark story between you and your opponent or gaming partner on there. Yet at the same time, winning isn't everything. I believe long-term, winning is about building that narrative. Playing your army is about building that narrative. And you're going to win a lot of games, you're going to lose a lot of games, and eventually you're going to reach this point where your army has personal history. Every time you pull this army out to play, every time you see it on the table, you're going to think about past past glories. And, and glory could be winning. Glory could be a heroic last stand. Glory could be something amazing on the tabletop. But early on, winning is important because it is the quickest and easiest way to validate for you as a player that you're progressing, that you're moving ahead, that you kind of know what you're doing on the tabletop. So we're going to try and get you into the win with a blueprint top down overall for 40k. Second disclaimer on here. Essentially, your first 10, 15, 20 games, uh, your certain number of X games, they don't count. And what I mean by that is, of course, you're going to pursue the win, but you are learning so much. You're learning about your army, your opponent's army, the missions, the rules, various tactics, the way things interface. There is a lot, even using YouTube to accelerate your learning process, there is a lot to grasp and take hold of. So if you let your losses kind of get to you in the beginning, that's going to actually put you behind a little bit. So think of it as like a pre-game tutorial on there. And certainly if you win a couple of games right out of the gate, you know, that's amazing. That's great on there. So here's where we start. The first place to start in 40K is to understand the rules of the game and the rules of the army that you are playing. And from that perspective, I don't mean have them memorized. I don't think you'll ever be able to memorize them all. And of course, as you go through various editions of 40K, at this point, I mean, all the rules, all these editions, second edition, third edition, four, five, six, they're all mashed into my mind on here. And every now and then I'll pull out an obscure rule and forget like that's a couple of editions ago. What you need to know, uh, that's what either the book is for, the digital is for, or that person at your gaming club that is the rules lawyer and has everything absolutely memorized. You just tap into their knowledge base. You just tap into their brain. Having a working set of the new of the rules is the starting point on there. Play through a few games with your army. Play through a few games just going through the various turns and how things work with the dice mechanics on there. They don't have to be perfect. Um, But again, a tutorial. This is going to begin to formulate what you can and cannot do on the table. And it's going to lay the foundation to being able to build the tactical building blocks of your army. So first couple of games, it's really just learning the process and working its way through. A great shortcut, if it's possible, and again, certainly YouTube. YouTube is great, but the difference, and I hope my podcasts are giving you some ideas, the primary difference on YouTube is it's, it's passive. You can't really ask questions. You ask some comments, or if something comes up in the moment, we really can't go in that direction. Live physical tabletop has a lot of more advantages to the learning process. So maybe there's someone at your gaming group or your club that can help walk you through. Or if it's a bunch of you playing together, right, you all got into 40K, basement battle reports, have you and your opponent walk through as a third person or a fourth person maybe serves as a game master and working through those steps on there. Get a working knowledge of the rules. 
The second layer. Now, these, these kind of layers that we're going to do, you don't have to have like one mastered and unlocked before you move to the next, but I'm layering them out in a very, very specific order where we want to have a base proficiency in each. I don't know, 60, 70% unlock, something along there. Once you kind of understand the rules and the various phases of the game, now you move on to your army. All of us start with different armies. Maybe you have one of the starter sets. Maybe you have one of the narrative sets. Maybe you've just gone crazy and you've got a massive army of everything. Maybe you're borrowing a friend's army. So the actual composition and whether you have a lot or a little, it really doesn't matter. Start out unit by unit. So Space Marines. I love Space Marines. I love Land Raiders, Dreadnoughts, Assault Marines, and Terminators on there. I love Vindicators also. Let's say, and, and some tax squads, let's say that's my list. Start off by taking one unit on the table. In this case, it's a Land Raider. doesn't really matter where you start. And throw down a couple of opposing units if your friend has that. Or if you don't, um, maybe put a place marker down and say, okay, this is a group of Chaos Space Marines or this is um, a group of Eldar Jet Bikes, whatever it's going to be. And walk yourself through the rules of each of your units. Kind of like a, a mini game Skirmish 40K on there. The next step after you've learned the base rules of the game in your army is understanding down to the unit level, the tabletop unit level, how that unit works. What shooting abilities does it have? What movement abilities? What assault abilities? Does it have any psychic powers? Does it have any abilities that unlock? Are there different configurations of war gear on there? And again, not memorizing it. That's what the army roster is for, whether it's printed analog or, or digital, but being able to look at a unit on the table and know what it's going to do, to have an idea of how it's going to work and what it wants to do on the table successfully and what's made it vulnerable. So you do that for a little bit, and this could be part of a game or it could be a couple of little mini games on there. Now you're getting ready for your first couple of regular big 40K games. You're going to put down multiple units, and again, whatever size your army, you're going to go up against your opponent. And now this is a chance to go head to head. This is a chance to play out the mission and to see what happens. You're trying to do really um, two things at this point. We're not even going to worry about our opponent's army yet. I mean, by the very nature of what you're facing, yes, you're going to have to deal with it a little bit. But what we're looking for is, can you take the units that you have with your army and have them work together to do two things. Remove your opponent's models, so effectively shooting and assaulting and interlocking, and second, trying to win the mission at the same time. Because in 40K, those are the two kind of goals. You're trying to win that mission, and you're trying to remove enemy models, because the quicker and more that you can remove of their models and their units you are diminishing their ability to win that mission objective. Yes, we always want to play for the mission, but at the same time, you need to be cutting down on your opponent's resources because they're going to be cutting down your resources through um, losses and things like that. You need to be ahead of that. So now utilizing your army kind of as one giant unit, as one giant mass working together. How many games does that take? Well... 10, 15, it's, it's really kind of hard to say. But eventually, this now leads us to the next phase where once you kind of have a general idea of what your army does and how it plays, now you start paying attention to your opponent's army uh, in a lot more detail. What are they trying to do with the models they've selected and what they're throwing down on the table? What are they trying to do? How are they going to try and stop your plans? What narrative is your army telling on there? And now you begin to see the entire tactics. So we play through there some more. Eventually, the, what we're trying to get to, the point we're trying to get to, and this is um, accelerated and a little bit higher level, but I want to give you a, a really far goalpost to aim for because in aiming for that goalpost, it's going to pull you along, slingshot you through everything else. And we'll look at a couple of sub-considerations to think about in a moment. But eventually, we want to get to the point where you're enjoying your army. you got to have fun playing 40K above all else. And in playing your army, you have a familiarity with it where you know what it's going to do. 
you know the rules. You know where all the units need to be. You know how the various things interlock. You are separating your... I'm not really trying to go all Zen here or kind of like um, Mushin and things like that. But essentially, you're trying to free your mind from actively thinking of the table, meaning like, okay, I have to move here. I have to do this. What does this unit do? As soon as your army is playable on autopilot, now you can begin to look for mistakes that your opponent makes. Now you can begin to look for advantages because instead of focusing on your army, you're focusing on the entire table, your army, your opponent's army, the terrain, the missions, what's going on. Did you have a good round of dice and you're following up? Did your opponent have a bad round of dice and you're going to follow up? You're looking for their mistakes that they're going to make and you're going to capitalize on them. And that's that's the dividing point. You know, that's the portal from one level to the next. In um, a lot of great tournament players, if you look, they've got their army down. They've got the rules down. They've done the research on the other armies that they're going to face. What's, um, what's the dividing line? What's the factor that separates them out? That factor is they're in that Zen moment and they can focus on making mistakes, the mistakes that the opponent is going to make on the table. And if you watch some high-level battle reports, you, you really um, begin to see this a lot. Two shortcuts. And by shortcuts, I mean let's cut down that learning curve a little bit. Actually, three good shortcuts here, one, two, and three. You play a game of 40K, and I believe you should always play it to the end. Now, obviously, if things are going late and you got to cut it halfway through because the club or the shop is closing... Um, that happens. But if you are playing a game and you are getting slaughtered and just destroyed for whatever reason, bad tactics, good opponent, bad dice, good dice, whatever it's going to be, always play the game out. First of all, it's 40K. Emperor protects. You never really know. Things could switch around and, and turn around. But even if you're like Fritz, absolutely this last game, 100%, midway through, midpoint game, there's no way I was turning it around. I believe it's important to show that respect to your gaming opponent. Yeah, I want to beat you. Yeah, I want to put you to the bolt pistol and the chainsword. But not today, and I'm going to let you have your fun. I'm going to play it out. I'm going to be doing the best I can. But we have both, as a social contract, taken time out of our lives that one could say maybe better spent with family and school and other responsibilities, things like that. We're, we're taking that, so I want to respect that in you. If I'm winning, that's one thing. If you're winning, that's good too. So absolutely, just for that community level, always play the game out. But as a subway to learn, I find when I know or I feel like it's hopeless, I will still try to make the best tactical decisions that I can. I will make my opponent as best as possible earn that win. Or I'll say, turn it into a little mini game now, okay, I'm going to lose the mission. I'm going to lose the big game. Are there other difficult or challenging things that I can accomplish on the table to build up my, my tactical repertoire? Meaning if you've got some you know, heavy units in the back, you've got some devastators, you've got whatever, hey, can I get there and take them out in a turn or two? That might be a good skill to be able to do with my army. I'll see what's presented there and push forward. So that is a chance to really explore that. Second... I don't want to say there's that, that guy, and I say that guy because it's always a gamer guy for some reason, who just, hmm, when you lose, they're ready to analyze and tell you everything that you did wrong and how great their army is and how amazing they are and how you know absolutely nothing and, and, and all that. Yes, that person does exist, but even if you are playing against someone that is somewhat like that, or you're playing against someone that just absolutely brutalized you on the table, after you lose, not only analyze the game, but be open. This is, this is a learning curve on there. And I understand nobody likes just getting destroyed on the table. Ask them, what went wrong? How did you do this? You know, would you have done anything different? Or I noticed, you know, with these units, I didn't really play it that well. You know, what do you suggest from this perspective on there? Use that as a chance to let them just totally analyze you to death. Most of it's probably ego and, and you know, chest thumping, but there might be one or two good pieces of knowledge for your knowledge base on there. 
two more sub pieces. There's about 10 or 15, so that's obviously going to have to be a part two to this. Uh, doubles games, triples games, multiple players on each side type games. 40K is social. The bigger the game, the better. I love playing with multiple players and and having those type of games, leveraging lots of models, multiple collections. But the great part about a doubles game, you and I versus two other players, those are four armies on the table. Those are four minds thinking on the table. Those are four different sets of tactics on the table. I guess it's like playing speed chess with 10 different people, and you're going down the table and making your move, next move, next move, next move. Uh, the analogy there, you get to see a lot more. You get to be engaged in a lot more 40K. Doubles games, triples games, bigger games are a great way to cut down that learning curve. And the final piece. I used to do this a lot when um, I'm kind of more half tournaments these days, mostly smaller rogue trader stuff, um, narrative play, and, and, and big games with 40K. But uh, there was a time when tournament play occupied my mind tremendously and really that was for a good two or three years that's how I played 40k any type of playing at the club was just practicing for tournaments on there and one of the secret weapons that I utilized that worked and I used this in x-wing miniatures to just propel me to the top there in tournament play play a game out three turns stop and then ask yourself who would win this game right just getting in a quantity of games. And uh, literally, I would go over Jawa's house um, or I'd go over my buddy's Nap's house for X-Wing and we would sit down and say, okay, look, we've got five hours to play. We need to get like a dozen games in. I, I can't get a dozen games of 40K in to the very end, but if I play the first few opening turns aggressively as best as I can, momentum, everything, commitment on the table, everything, and now see and say, okay, if the game continued out, most likely, who would win? I need to make sure that most likely would be me on the table. That is a great way to just get in the alpha and get your games going and push it through there. So that's, that's kind of the attack plan. That's the attack plan. Pushing through, getting started in 40K, working your way up, and putting you in a good place to start leveraging that win. Uh, part two to this, we've got a little bit more on that checklist of kind of you can do this to speed up your game, this, this, ideas to cut down on the learning curve. Um, we're definitely, definitely going to take a look at those, and I'll upload those in the next day or two to my channel here and push it up to the 40K archive and playlist.